Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. To convert millimeter to micrometer, multiply the value by 1000. Extra size is calculated as image size over magnification. So, the answer is A. The bullet points told us that, at times 10 magnification, 10 IP square Q matches 10 divisions on the stage micrometer. This means each IP square Q is 10 micrometers. When we change the objective lens to times 40, which is 4 times greater than the original magnification, the measurement of the IP square Q has to be divided by 4 as we zoom in 4 times greater. So, at times 40, each eyepiece unit is 2.5 micrometer. If an avalus is 96 units, its diameter is 240 micrometers in total. We need to identify statements that are correct for both chloroplasts and mitochondria. One is incorrect as they both contain 70S ribosomes. Two is correct, they have circular DNA. Since they both have DNA and ribosomes, they can carry out transcription and translation. They have inner and outer membranes, so 4 is correct as well. The answer is C. Let's identify these structures first. A is the nucleus. B is the chloroplast. C is the cell wall. D is the nuclear envelope. Root cells would not have chloroplast as they do not need to carry out photosynthesis. Fructose is a monosaccharide just like glucose. So, it can certainly pass through the pores in the membrane. The other three options are either an organism, a protein, or an organelle, which is composed of way more atoms compared to glucose and fructose. So, their sizes are very much larger and would not be able to pass through the pores. The genetic material of viruses can be DNA or RNA, but not both. Adenine is the only option that can be found in both DNA and RNA. The other three can only be found in either one of the nucleic acids, so they won't be present in all viruses. A range of glucose solutions with non-concentrations were prepared to be the standard solution for comparison. So the concentration of glucose is the independent variable. The final color of the solution is the result. It is the dependent variable. The temperature of the water bath and the volume of glucose solutions were kept constant throughout the experiment. They are both the control variables. Both amylose and amylopectin are carbohydrates. They are formed by the condensation of alpha-glucose molecules. Only amylose is a linear molecule, amylopectin is branch. The monomers are joined together by alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds, so it is true for them. Saturated triglyceride molecules are made up of fatty acids that have no carbon-carbon double bond, while unsaturated triglyceride molecules have at least one carbon-carbon double bond. Whenever a double bond is found, there will be fewer hydrogen So, A is the correct statement. This is a phospholipid molecule. A is wrong as fatty acid is the hydrophobic part. B is wrong as the labelled part is not triglyceride. C is incorrect since the head part of a phospholipid should be hydrophilic instead of hydrophobic. D is the answer, as the phosphate group is a part of the hydrophilic end. Hydrogen bond is found in both secondary and tertiary structures. Hydrophobic interaction is only in tertiary structure. The covalent bond is found in the primary structure, as the peptide bond is covalent. It can also be found in the tertiary structure occasionally, due to the presence of disulfide bridges in some proteins. Triglycerides always contain at least three double bonds, as the carboxy group of fatty acids has a carbon-oxygen double bond. Collagen and hemoglobin are both proteins. The monomers, amino acids, have carbon-oxygen double bonds in their carboxyl group. Water are dipole and the partial charge is represented by the delta plus and minus sign. Oxygen is slightly more negative, while hydrogen is more positive, so the answer is B. Extracellular enzyme is an enzyme secreted by a cell and functions outside of that cell. B, C, and D are enzymes that work inside a cell, so 
they are intracellular enzymes. An enzyme always lowers the activation energy of a reaction, so C and D are incorrect. In the lock and key hypothesis, the active site does not change. It is always complementary to the substrate exactly. So the answer is B. A is a description of the induced fit hypothesis. Without the presence of an enzyme, hydrogen peroxide does break down, but very slowly. So, 4 is the line for substrate only. In the presence of a competitive inhibitor, the rate of reaction increases as the substrate concentration increases. The rate is lower at first, but it will approach the original Vmax at a higher substrate concentration. 2 is the line for this. A non-competitive inhibitor lowers the rate of reaction and cannot be overcome by increasing substrate concentration. It is shown by 3. Calcium ion is a charged particle, so it cannot pass through the hydrophobic region of the phospholipid bilayer and requires a channel protein. Glucose is water-soluble and large. It requires a carrier protein to pass through. Carbon dioxide is the only one that can cross by simple diffusion. As the volume of a cube increases, its surface area to volume ratio decreases. So, C and D are wrong. If the sides are double, the ratio halves. If you are not sure about this, just draw a few cubes and do the calculation and you will find the answer easily. The mitotic cell cycle includes interface, mitosis, and cytokinesis. Note that the term cell cycle includes all three, but the term mitosis excludes interface and cytokinesis. The number of cells replaced divided by the total number of cells times 100 will give you the percentage, which is 1%. DNA polymerase joins the nucleotides together by forming phosphodiester bonds. The term base only refers to the nitrogenous base of a nucleotide. It is not the parts forming the phosphodiester bonds, so A and B are out. D mentions ribose, which is not found in DNA, so it is incorrect as well. Due to complementary base pairing, a DNA molecule's percentage of C and G should be equal. That makes A wrong and B the correct answer. C is incorrect, as it says the percentage is the same in just one strain. D is not true, as the percentage of C in one strain wouldn't be the same as the opposite strain. Question 23 talks about a gene called PDX1. It is asking the reason why it can be difficult to sequence this gene. One is wrong, as all nuclei in an organism's body would contain all the genes it has. So, you won't have only a small number of nuclei in the body cells having a particular gene. While two is a correct statement, as some genes are not expressed in certain cells in the body, it does not affect DNA sequencing. Three is the only correct option. There are three hydrogen bonds between C and G base pairs. So, a gene with a low proportion of A and T would have a lot of C and G, making it difficult to separate the two strands due to the large number of hydrogen bonds. To identify the cells that are actively synthesizing mRNA, we need to label a structure which is unique to mRNA. Uracil and ribose are found in RNA but not DNA. So, they are suitable options. A is the answer as the sieve tube element has peripheral cytoplasm and little organelles to allow more movement of cell sap in it. B is wrong as slowing down the movement will not help with the function of phloem. The function stated in C is for xylem, not phloem. D is wrong because lignin is supposed to prevent water loss. Also, preventing water loss is not something we need to achieve here. Adhesion is caused by the attraction between water molecules and the cellulose cell wall. A is incorrect, as lignin is largely hydrophobic, with some hydrophilic region. So, its presence does not contribute to adhesion. B is also wrong, as extra water does not ensure the attraction between them and the wall. C contributes to the continuous movement of water, and that is not adhesion. So D is the answer. A narrow tube causes bond to form more easily between the water molecules and the wall. 
bulk movement of materials occurs in all four of the vessels. Arteries and veins have the mass flow of a lot of substances due to the blood flow. The flown sieve tube and xylem vessel have the mass flow of flown sap and xylem sap. The Casparian strip is made up of suberin, and it stops water from moving through the endodermis in the root by the apoplast pathway. So, 1 and 2 can both be the description of suberin. 3 is lignin since it is hydrophobic. 4 refers to cellulose, a carbohydrate that can form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. The apoplast pathway is the movement of water in the cell wall and intercellular spaces only. 1, 6, and 8 show the movement of water across the cell surface membrane. 3, 5, and 7 show the water moves in the cytoplasm via the plasmodesmata. So, only 2 and 4 are correct. Root cells absorbing mineral ions must receive sugar from the source for respiration so that ATP can be synthesized for active transport. Hence, it is a sink. A seed that is starting to grow has no leaves for photosynthesis. So, the storage cells need to provide sugar for other parts. It is a source. This artery is located within alveolar tissue. It carries the oxygenated blood to be exchanged in the capillaries. Arteries that are near to their destination are muscular rather than elastic. Perkine tissue transmits impulses to the ventricles for ventricular systole. So, a decrease in the transmission to the right side would affect the contraction of the right ventricle. A is not correct as the delay of impulse by AVN is a normal event that must occur. C is not true as the perkine tissue does not cause the atrial systole. SAN is the pacemaker. So a decrease in impulse transmission in a structure that receives an impulse from it should not affect how it sends out the impulse. X has a higher blood pressure as the blood comes from an artery. In the capillaries, water together with many substances of small sizes leak out to form the tissue fluid, while large plasma proteins stay inside the capillaries. So the water potential would decrease in Y. The oxygen dissociation curve at the right indicates a low affinity. It means that hemoglobin releases oxygen more easily. A, B, and D are all descriptions for a higher affinity. When there is more carbon dioxide, there will be more carbonic acid forming in the red blood cells. This leads to a greater concentration of hydrogen carbonate ions and protons due to its dissociation. Protons will bind with hemoglobin, forming hemoglobinic acid. So, B is the right answer. A is wrong as chloride ions should move into the cell. C is wrong as it is the opposite of what happened. D is incorrect as more carbon dioxide should cause more carbamino hemoglobin to be formed. The column for short diffusion distance contains the correct statements for all the options. All these features reduce the diffusion distance of gases. However, in the large surface area column, statements A, B, and D have nothing to do with the surface area of alveoli. Infectious diseases are transmissible diseases that are caused by pathogens. Many different types of pathogens can cause infections. So, A, C, and D are incorrect as they define the term by referring to only one type of pathogen. On top of that, the transmission mode described in those three options is also too narrow to define what infectious diseases are. Poor sanitation usually leads to the spread of cholera, as it is a waterborne disease. It is likely that in the situation described here, the victims have no access to clean water. Penicillin works by affecting the cell wall formation in bacteria. Since viruses do not have cell walls, they won't be affected by these antibiotics. One is not true, and the body production is a row of plasma B lymphocytes. Two is correct. Phagocytes use their receptor to combine with antigens on a pathogen 
before they engulf it. Three is true since phagocytosis is a form of endocytosis. After phagocytosis of bacteria and other foreign particles, waste products of digestion are released by exocytosis. So, four is correct as well. Phagocytes digest the pathogens they engulf using the hydrolytic enzymes in lysosomes. So, five is true. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.